the tendon repair and post operative care with results are being discussed the tendon primary tendon repair requires a core suture that stabilizes and aligns the cut ends and running epitendinous sutures that smoothens and strengthens the repair in hand the standard tendon repair is performed by grasping modified kessler sutures with buried knot this diagram shows the method of suturing it grasps the tendon substance that provides strong hold to the suture the longitudinal sutures are taken at the center of the tendon and the transfer suture is taken superficial to the longitudinal sutures the repair is completed by taking running simple epitendinous sutures extensor tendon <clears throat> extensor tendon repair will be shown on video extensor tendon laceration case due to glass injury 2 weeks back patient is unable to extend the middle finger and there is extension left the s shaped incision was taken including the scar the distal end of the tendon is identified and mobilized now the proximal end is identified and is not not found retracted due to attachment of juncta gingiva on the either side the tendon end is dissected free and is stabilized with a hypodermic needle to prevent retraction the tendon end is prepared for suturing the ends are divided and fashioned using a sharp instrument either a surgical blade or a cutting scissors that will not crush the tendon substance the picture is showing the prepared tendon ends modified kessler core suture is taken using 40 proline starting in the middle of the cut end longitudinal suture is passed that exits around 1 to 1.5 cm on the dorsal aspect of the tendon close to the midline yeah. from the cut end longitudinal suture is taken to the center of the tendon and it comes out on the dorsal aspect close to the midline the transfer suture is passed from lateral aspect at a point couple of millimeters towards the cut end and is superficial to the longitudinal tendon this next suture is the longitudinal suture which is being shown starting from the dorsal aspect at the level of the previous suture going deep to the transfer stitch and exiting at the middle of the cut end this completes the suture at one end and the strength of the grasping suture is being shown the same procedure is repeated on the other side of the tendon cut tendon end important point to note here is that tendon is not crushed with the forceps the forceps is not closed completely and is used only to stabilize the tendon or to retract the tendon but sometimes it is required to hold the tendon with the tooth forceps to stabilize it so that the sutures are easily passed the best best place to do so is at the cut end of the tendon as shown here and any portion of the tendon that gets crushed due to holding with the forceps is excised before the repair is completed now the transfer stitch is being passed
the longitudinal stitch deep to the transfer stitch The crushed portion of the tendon which was due to holding with the forceps is being divided. The suture is being tied and the knot is buried. tendon ends after repair, after the core suture. Now using 4-0 ethylon, the epitendinous sutures is now, are now taken, starting from the cut end from inside out. Simple and continuous sutures are applied all around the tendon circumference. Bear in progress. Once the one side of the circumference is repaired, the needle is passed on the other side under the tendon and repair is continued on the posterior aspect. You can see. Simple continuous sutures are being taken. Here the last bite will be from outside in as the la first bite was from inside out. The repair is being shown. Smooth. Knot is buried. Complete repair is shown. The finger is not dropping now. The wrist flexion and extension is done to check the repair which is strong enough and not too tight. The tendon excursion due to tenodesis effect and finger joint position and movements are comparable to the other finger, the wound closed. The hand is immobilized in the volar slab with wrist in dorsiflexion of about 25 to 30 degrees, MP joint in full extension and IP joints are left free. The sutures are removed at two weeks and slab at four weeks. At four weeks a removable splint is given to maintain MP joints in extension and wrist in extension. 
Active guarded exercises are started and range of motion is increased weekly till 8 weeks. Any passive mobilization if required is started after 8 weeks when the repair is strong enough. At this time, normal daily living activities are fully allowed. A clinical case of tendon laceration in zone 2 following class injury. Both the flexor tendons are cut at the level of the PIP joint. The FDS tendon is repaired with 60 proline using core and epitendinous suturing. The FDS, FDP tendon is repaired with 4-0 proline for core suture and 6-0 proline for epitendinous suture. The repair as shown is smooth and not bunched up which is essential for tendon gliding in the tight pulley system. Finally, the tendon sheath is repaired and tendons are covered. This facilitates tendon gliding and prevents adhesions. Post-operatively, the hand is immobilized in posterior slab with wrist in 35 degree flexion, MP joints in 60 to 70 degree flexion for six weeks. Nail traction is applied with rubber bands to keep finger in flexion to protect the repair. The early mobilization is possible by active extension and passive mobilization, passive flexion. Early post-operative mobilization is necessary as it helps in rapid recovery of tensile strength, prevents adhesions and improves tendon excursion. A clinical case showing final results. This patient had two level injuries due to sharp cut. The proximal level is at the lower forearm where all the tendons, median and ulnar nerves and radial and ulnar artery were divided. The distal level is at the wrist where the FDP tendons were spared and rest all structures were damaged. All the damaged structures were repaired at both levels. The extension of finger is shown here. Good flexion of finger and thumb is seen. The patient has also undergone tendon transfers to improve the small muscle functions. An ECRL four-tail four transfer was done to improve MP joint flexion and IP joint extension in the fingers. Extensor indices proprius opponens plasti was done and good thumb opposition was achieved. 